And so what's the vision for your farm as far as production and inputs go? So at the moment what we have done already with the, um, for the pigs and the cattle, we have already built a boning room on the farm and I'm the butcher here. And we did that through crowdfunding, so yeah, thank you to our community. Um, and that enabled us to take control of the butchering process, like even just things like, I know for sure what's in my sausages. I don't have to wonder whether the butcher put something else in it. Um, so that sort of transparency and, and confidence in our product. But the other really important one, and Joel talks about this, about supply chain control, is it brought 40% of our margin back to us. And so it's just work harder <laughs> and smarter, but you're just mostly going to work harder. Um, so we've done that part of this model already. The pigs and cattle, we have as many as we will have. We've got 12 sows and two boars, which runs a herd of about 100 at any time. And we run about 18 cattle at any time. We won't get any bigger. That means that we can um, slaughter 14 pigs and one steer per month. And that's enough for us to run a completely viable farm. The next stage, now that we're almost finished with supply chain um, infrastructure building, the next stage would be to grow more uh, feed here on the farm for the pigs. Because right now we source about 50% of their feed from spent brewer's grain from a local brewery. But we would like, and about 30% is pellets that we have custom made for us with no GM soy and no sub-therapeutic antibiotics and no post-industrial food waste, which is like Smarties from the factory floor. That's what's in commercial pig feed. We said we don't want any of that, so we pay more for that pleasure. Um, but that's only about 30% of their feed, and yet we'd like it to be zero. We'd like to grow all of that here. So um, wheat, barley, lupins would be, so the rotation we'd be looking at growing for the pigs here. And then we'd have a, we'd have a closed a closed system basically, except for taking on other people's so-called waste products. And we also, in terms of output, building the commercial kitchen is enabling me to value add all of the so-called waste bones and, and fat and heads and things so that they'll all become actual food products still for bone stocks and stuff, which means we really will be zero waste, like we are, we are closing. Cool.